uh, yeah, and also like like Parth said, being incoming freshman, um, we can't, sometimes like I I think I sometimes face this tendency to just say yes to everything that's being offered to me, and I think you spoke a little bit about that. Uh, and this always brings me back to like this college triangle thing, which I really liked asking guests on this show. So I think uh, you know you've heard about this triangle, uh, where you have uh, enough uh, enough sleep, good social life, and good grades. And you need to pick two in these three. Uh, what do you think uh, about this triangle? Do you think this is true? Did this apply to you? Yeah, I definitely think it did apply to me because um, I did want, um, you know, a strong academic future for me when I came into university. And while this ultimately changed for me, my goal was always to do a master's after my undergrad. Um, but I also wanted to have a social life, and um, basically, my sleep did go out of the window. Like you are, you do have to get used to the fact that your eight hours can become four or five. Um, but I think one thing where at least my university's timetable was very helpful was that they, rather than having very long bursts, they split the year into basically eight to nine week terms, where basically you put your body through all sorts of hell for eight weeks, and then you have a vacation where your first thing to do is sleep um, and catch up on all of that and. That was basically the model most students around me followed. I I don't really think there was anyone I knew that was getting like a healthy amount of sleep. Um, because I think it I, there's a version of the triangle that they use in the UK, especially at Oxford and Cambridge, where it says that you either leave college with a first, a blue, or a spouse. <laughs> I mean, most of us leave with none of the three. Um, but um, essentially, um, the principle is that you're either worse toiling for an academic position, um, you're, or for getting on one of the university teams for the Cambridge match, which gets you a blue, um, which is just a blue blazer, and a spouse, I think, is self-explanatory. Um, though, to be fair, one of my friends in college, I I think graduate managed to graduate and ultimately get all three. Um, so it's not that you have to choose, but I think you know we can describe those guys as unicorns. <laughs> De definitely, I think this uh, sort of trade-off between work and <laughs> sleep and actually having fun while you're at college is something that's very personal and that we're all going to have to deal with. And we spoke to you a little bit about how during your second year, you were a lot more busy because there were so many things that were happening at the same time. And I'm sure these four or five hours of sleep was a, a massive part of that. Now, during that period, how would you recommend, how did you manage your time and how would you recommend others manage their time? Right. So again, I, I would say I would use time management in the loosest form form to describe my second year, it was more, there was always something urgent to resolve. So basically at different points in my second year, um, I had a research assistantship with um, one of the researchers in the economics department. Um, we, it was actually quite interesting. We were doing a behavioral economics experiment in Ethiopia and I was just basically a data monkey for that. Um, then in the other big project I had going on um, was that I actually, as an undergraduate, I won a research grant from BNY Mellon, so I had my own funding and team, and we had to conduct a research project that took us about a year to do. Um, and it was completely funded by them, and it was pretty cool to be able to lead a research project as an undergraduate. Um, on top of that, aside from classes, uh, my major time commitment was to two different societies. So the first was the Economics and Management Society, which I actually started at the beginning of my second year. And the second was the Oxford Guild, which is sort of like a careers and business society. But when I joined it, it was branching out into organizing speaker events. And while we started with relatively serious speakers, like, you know, CEOs or like the director of Human Rights Watch, um, by the end of my term there, we were branching out into <laughs> Kanye West and Lil Jon. Um, but, no, that, but 
on organizing events for the guild and we had to have a lot of socials for our sponsors because one of the principles behind these societies is you normally have a corporate like say Deloitte or McKinsey sponsoring you in exchange for say their you know employees being at your social events to say recruit people for internships and graduate jobs so um organizing and making sure enough ent- attendees with that that was basically you know a couple of hours a day of work whenever you had an event coming up which was about weekly um even with the economic society getting a society off its ground raising some funding getting the business school to support us and then you know get mm-hmm. we had to organize events for the new economics and management freshmen and running that um and we got off to a good start because we had a few speaker events that got us a lot of traction including um you know we had like a couple of nobel laureates come in and give speech and give wow. lectures and stuff so we 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 had a strong start um and yeah so that was what second year was about the one thing i would say that i think might be different about my experience than others is um oxford has no consequential exams in second year like all the exams you kind of give in second year are mocks because they examine you only at the end of third year So the only exams you have to count towards your degree happen at the end of third year. So you can afford to sort of cut corners in terms of how well prepared you are in second year and make up for it in third year which is pretty much what everyone does. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's quite cool to hear about how by the time you came to your second year you figured out more about what you wanted and what you could compromise on to get the experiences you needed. Thank you.